I'd like to call to order the Village of Riverside Board of Trustees regular meeting minute for Thursday, August 4th, 2022. We can all stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Ethan, would you please call the roll? President Ballerin. Here. Trustee Evans. Here. Trustee Galagos. Here. Trustee Marshazga. Here. Trustee Hannon. Here. Trustee Pollock. Here. Also present, Village Attorney Molina, Here. Village Manager Francis, and Village Clerk Soul. Thank you. Um, first up is the President's report. I have one item on my report. Um, it is our duty as sworn elected officials of the state of Illinois to uphold the laws of our state. And the following resolution is a notice to our state officials that we at the local level take this pledge seriously. Reproductive rights and the rights of caregivers, doctors is in jeopardy by jurisdictions outside the state of Illinois. And it is our desire to ensure that those rights are to be protected under law. If we pass this resolution tonight, it will be sent to our state representatives county commissioners, and it will also be forwarded to w the West Central Municipal Council to distribution to their members. The WCMC membership includes 51 municipalities, five townships, and two community colleges, with the hope that many of these municipalities will enact this resolution and forward to their state representatives. Riverside is a small voice, but with the power of our neighboring municipalities, that voice will be much louder. I would like to take this moment to thank Trustee Evans for bringing this issue before the board, as well as Trustee Marsh Asga, Trustee Clarity, Dr. Mateo, and Madeline Pollock for their input on, the co on its contents and editing the proposed referendum. I am proud of our village board for taking a leading role in this issue, as well as recognizing the power when like-minded municipalities stand in unison. And with that, I would ask if Trustee Pollock would be willing to make a motion to accept this resolution? Yes, I certainly will. Uh, I move that the Village Board adopt the resolution titled Resolution Supporting Reproductive Rights. And can I have a second? I second. Second by Trustee Marsh Aska. Any further discussion? Hearing none, Ethan, if you'd please call the roll. Trustee Evans. Here. Trustee. Aye. <laughs> Trustee Gallagos. Aye. Trustee Marsh Asga. Aye. Trustee Hannon. Aye. Trustee Pollock. Aye. Thank you. I have asked Madeline Pollock, a Riverside resident who's currently a sophomore at Case Western Reserve University in Ohio, to read this resolution into the record. Madeline. Thank you, President Ballerine and Village Trustees. <clears throat> resolution supporting reproductive rights. Whereas the village of Riverside is a non-home rule municipality in accordance with Article 7, Section 7 of the Constitution of the State of Illinois of 1970. And whereas the President and Board of Trustees of the village of Riverside has a sworn duty to uphold and protect the rights of all citizens and guests in the community to the full extent of the law. And whereas the Illinois Reproductive Health Act 775 ILCS 55-1-1, effective June 12th of 2019, sets forth the fundamental rights of individuals in the state of Illinois to make autonomous decisions about one's own reproductive health, including the fundamental right to use or refuse reproductive health care. And whereas, the President and Board of Trustees of the Village of Riverside request the state of Illinois to declare Illinois a sanctuary state for individuals providers, and caregivers seeking, performing, and administering aid to individuals exercising their right of bodily autonomy within our state boundaries. And whereas the President and Board of Trustees of the Village of Riverside believe that the state of Illinois should not be complicit in the acts violating basic bodily autonomy and criminalizing reproductive health care. And whereas, and whereas, the state of Illinois finds itself on an island in the Midwest in protecting an individual's autonomy over their health decisions, and it is important now, more than ever, to make sure those rights are protected. And whereas, in the state of Illinois, abortion is and remains legal across the state. 
And whereas other states, including neighboring jurisdictions, have enacted, initiated, and announced plans to severely or wholly restrict the rights of individuals in their jurisdictions to access reproductive health care, including by attempting to prevent them from seeking that care in other jurisdictions. And now, therefore, be it resolved by the President and the Board of Trustees of the Village of Riverside, Cook County, Illinois, that legislation ought to be introduced to protect the right to and all reproductive health care to the fullest extent possible, including prohibiting law enforcement from aiding in investigations related to seeking or performing abortions on warrants issued by neighboring jurisdictions. Thank you. Thank you very much, Madeline. I truly appreciate you coming and doing that for us tonight. We move on to the manager's report. I do not have a report this evening. Next on our agenda is non-agenda <coughs> items. Uh, is there anybody in the public that would like to speak to items that are not on the agenda tonight? Yes, sir. Bob Finn, 237 Blackhawk. Uh, I don't believe this is on the agenda. I looked and didn't see it on there. First of all, I'd like to thank all the staff, vendors, and surrounding towns that helped us deal with the storms in mid-June, and also uh, thank all the trustees here. I'm sure in some way or other they were involved in, in all the cleanup efforts, and thanks very much for all that. <clears throat> I want to expound on that a little bit. Uh, I don't know if there are any plans for submitting expense reports to the government. I suspect there may be. And I hope that those plans, excuse me, include uh, replacement costs for trees. And uh, I think uh, when you talk about replacing these mature trees, it's really not a one-for-one -one replacement cost. So I hope that's considered as we look at replacing these. <clears throat> Finally, I think the village needs to consider upgrading their water procedures and policies. Uh, I, I think using a garden hose hooked up to a small pump does not do it. And my understanding is, at least in the past, the policy has been if you plant a tree on the parkway, the resident is responsible for watering it. Well, as I age, I'm more sensitive to the fact that residents aren't always able to get out and do those kind of things. So I really think the village needs to consider changing those policies if they're going to plant trees, they need to take more responsibility for, for watering them. And it's not only uh, equipment that's upgraded, but I think more, more funds need to be put into the Public Works Department to be able to, to fund this. Thank you, Mr. Fenn. And you. we did meet with several municipalities and um, representatives of uh, Illinois Emergency Ma uh, Management and FEMA, and um, they gave us the the prerequisites we need to make make a file, and it's going to be a tough. It's like twenty two million dollars, so it's it's going to be tough. But we'll we'll continue to work with our neighbors and see how close we can get to that number. Is that uh, is that just through the state, or is that at the federal level? I that's at the that's at the federal level. Federal level. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you. Anything else? Okay. Hearing none, uh, we move on to the consent agenda. Clerk Soule, if you would please. Ratify voucher list of bills, July 21st, 2022. Approve voucher list of bills, August 4th, 2022. Review and file finance, May monthly report. Review and file finance and public works, June monthly report. Review and file quarterly purchase order report. Approve village board of trustees meeting minutes, July 7th, 2022. Review and file economic development commission special meeting minutes, May 18th, 2022. Review and file Economic Development Commission special meeting minutes June 29th, 2022. Review and file Historical Commission regular meeting minutes June 21st, 2022. Review and file Landscape Advisory Commission regular meeting minutes June 14th, 2022. Review and file Landscape Advisory Commission special meeting minutes June 24th, 2022. Review and file Parks and Recreation Board regular meeting minutes June 28th, 2022. Review and file Planning and Zoning Commission regular meeting minutes June 22nd, 2022. 
review and file Riverside TV Commission regular meeting minutes June 13th, 2022. An ordinance authorizing execution of an amendment to a contract <coughs> and lease agreement between the Village of Riverside and BNSF Railway Company. A motion to approve revised Village of Riverside fiscal year 2022 official pay plan. A resolution authorizing the village manager to waive competitive bidding and execute a purchase order to top tower for the purchase of a new communications tower and removal of the existing tower for an amount not to exceed 30,000. A motion to approve final plans for the Sherwin-Williams project at 3300 South Harlem Avenue. Thank you, Ethan. Do any of these items need to be removed? Hearing none, I would ask for a motion. So made. Motion by Trustee Gallagher, second. Second. Second by Trustee Marshaska. Any further discussion? Hearing none, Ethan. Trustee Evans. <coughs> Aye. Trustee Gallagher. Aye. Trustee Marshaska. Aye. Trustee Hannon. Aye. Trustee Pollock. Aye. Motion passes, thank you. If anyone asks me what my biggest accomplishment of the first year was, and that is having Ethan read the consent agenda. Thank you. Um, board, department, and commission reports. Do we have any board, department, or commission reports this evening? Okay, hearing none, we move on to pending business. Uh, ComEd update regarding the June 13, 2022 storm. Um, due to yesterday's storm, notified, uh, ComEd notified the village that they were unable to attend this evening meeting, but we'll be at our next meeting on September 1st. Um, we all appreciate what ComEd did for us that, that, that day. I, re I remember Chief Buckley pulling up in my driveway not too long after it, and I asked him, how long do you think we'll be out of power? And he said, a week or so. And because he had already known that several poles had fallen and, and knew the vast destruction much more than I did. And I think most of the village was up in three to three to three and a half days at a cost of almost 10 and a half, maybe $11 million to comment. So I, I look forward to Katrina coming here and uh, giving us an update. We will move on to B, which is our Swan Pond fence update. Director Tab. Good evening, everyone. Uh, last November, the board approved the installation of a cedar split rail fence in Swan Pond after some concern was brought to the board um, from staff about a drop off into the river. As part of that approval, the board requested that the Landscape Commission and the Preservation Commission um, provide some feedback on that installation. Uh, the following is the feedback of each commission. The Preservation Commission agreed that a safety barrier is required and the currently installed fence is appropriate, but reiterated that should it ever go into disrepair or be damaged, a barrier that is more appropriate to the surrounding area is preferred. The commission agreed that a similar that a fence similar to the one in an early Riverside publication, which is included in your packet, would be more appropriate for that section of fence, uh, that section of path. The LAC or the Landscape Advisory Commission was not in agreement on what material should be used if the fence were to be replaced. However, they agreed that they would like to review any future proposal. That is all I have. I have if you have any questions, I'd be more than happy to take those regarding the fence installation. I just have a couple, one question is, I sure. have been sent some pictures of some damage to the fence. Is that it's currently being repaired. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? We move on to a resolution approving a hardscape permit application for the installation of a park bench to be located at the Olmstead Overlook at the top of Swan Pond across from the 150 Fairbank Road. Director Tapp. In front of you is a hardscape application for a park bench to be included in that Olmstead Overlook that was installed at the top of Swan Pond earlier this year in uh, commemoration of Frederick Law Olmstead's 200th birthday, which is this year. As part of the design, a park bench was included in the center of the grove, and uh, for that to be installed, a hardscape permit application was submitted. Um, it was reviewed by the uh, Preservation and Landscape Advisory Commission and approved for installation. The bench will be similar to the ones in the Central Business District with the cast iron uh, or wrought iron black sides with the composite uh, slats. If anyone has any questions you have to answer those trustee hannon i assume the fence or the uh, fence the uh, bench will be facing the river yes perfect 
Any other questions? Hearing none, if I can have a motion. Motion made. Motion by Trustee Galgo. Second. Second. Second by Trustee Marshaska. Any further discussion? Hearing none, Ethan, if you'd please call the roll. Trustee Evans. Aye. Trustee Galagos. Aye. Trustee Marshaska. Aye. Trustee Hannon. Aye. Trustee Pollock. Aye. Motion carries, thank you. Um, new business, um, we're gonna discuss electric vehicles charging stations. Director Tab and Director Johns. Thank you. Earliest year, the village of Riverside applied for and was awarded the ComEd Powering Safe Communities grant in the amount of $10,000 for the installation of an EV charging station. The grant was a partnership between the Metropolitan Mayor's Caucus and ComEd to help fund projects that enhance the quality of life for the many families and businesses that are served in the ComEd territory. The ComEd grant will be required, however, to be utilized by the end of March 2023, so early next year. In addition to the ComEd grant, the IEPA, or the Illinois Environmental Protection Agency, has advertised an electric vehicle charging incentive program. This program would cover up to 80% of the cost to install electrical vehicle charging stations. The state has yet, however, to begin taking applications for this program, and no further details have been released as of a couple days ago when our uh, village engineer did inquire. While waiting to receive details on the IEPA funding, staff met with the village's engineer engineering firm to identify various locations within the Riverside Central Business District that would be suitable for, suitable for the installation of electrical vehicle charging stations. The following are a couple of the locations identified for possible stations. Um, those, there is a map in the pack as well if you want to take a look at that. So um, we have three locations. They are, uh, they are identified you know, due to proximity to the train station, the commuter parking lot, and the downtown uh, business district. So the first would be lot, commuter lot one, which um, obviously is west of the train station, and the location for the, uh, the stations would be in the southwest corner of the lot, which is the closest in proximity to a comet pole. All of these installations would require, um, short of the one in front of the train station, would require some infrastructure installed by ComEd, including a transformer and a, um, a breaker and a meter pedestal to power these things. Uh, that, as you can see the price, that you know, uh, is approximately $90,000, and these are all approximations. We don't have uh, hard numbers until we do have ComEd quotas on the installation uh, once we were to identify a location. The other location identified, which would be the cheapest because it's the closest to power, would be in front of the train station, and that one was um, identified by the engineering firm as the, uh, the easiest to get up and running because it does it requires the least amount of infrastructure to be installed. The third location would be the Green Parking Lot, which is located on East Burlington. This would be, um, the stations would be located on the west portion of that parking lot. Again, it's next to or adjacent to a common utility pole, and we would need a transformer installed along with a pedestal for a meter. So tonight, what staff is looking for is direction from the board on whether or not to pursue the installation of an electric vehicle charging station with the understanding that the village may not receive any funding from the state. Additional direction is sought in which location the board would prefer to see an electric vehicle charging station out of those three identified. Thank you. Ms. Johns? No comment until the um, area, <laughs> a, a location of the meter. Okay. Um, I'll start the conversation only because I've, I've had conversations with several of the trustees. I believe everyone is, and correct me if I'm wrong, everyone is in favor of moving forward with an EV station. Um, we think it's very important to our village. Um, the location is questionable. On There's some questions that need to be answered, and that's com whether commuters or whatever, what type of station we have on how long it takes to, to power and if there's any possibilities for possible uh, private-public partnership with one of our businesses, um, or several of our businesses for that matter. Um, so that's kind of the overview that, I, that I've received from some of the trustees. Anybody else would like to um, add anything, please feel free. That covers it. Go ahead, Trustee Pollock. Thank you. I, I just, location is, is what I, I don't 
know what the right location is. I'm wondering, one, this is for staff to do further research on, I think. I'm wondering if there's any literature out there about other downtowns and their experience where they get used the most. Uh, that might be helpful. I, I don't know if it exists, but it probably does. Um, <clears throat> as far as putting it in the commuter lot, that's fine if we know there's a demand, because those, as I understand it, if they're in the commuter lot, they are, can only be used by commuters who have a permit. And I'd want to be sure that we have enough demand to put them there, that someone actually will pay extra to, to use them in the commuter parking lots. And otherwise, I just would like to have them located where the public can get the best access, and I don't know what that is. But. Trustee Marshaska? Uh, yes. Well, for me, the analysis of where the location is does depend on what type of a charging station it is. Um, it is my understanding <coughs> that there are three different levels of charging stations, uh, and that for commercial purposes, the level three chargers, which these cost estimates seem to parallel, um, level three chargers could take you from a zero charge to a full charge in 20 minutes. Um, and given that, to me, the location that it makes sense to put these is um, very much uh, along our, an area where our businesses are, where someone who is taking advantage of a 20 minute charge can easily reach, um, you know, shopping or uh, a quick bite to eat or something like that. So I would lean towards either the green parking lot uh, on Burlington or if there, it is possible that there is a street spot along Burlington where the, um, the transformers are closer and it would bring the cost down from the 90,000 that's estimated here. Uh, that would be worth looking at. But also, I am very intrigued by the possibility of a um, partnership with one of our local businesses. So I think that we should um, you know, pursue that. And when the details of the IEPA's um, uh, reimbursement program become available, that may dictate uh, what path we decide to take. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hannon. Um, I will say this out loud because it's probably the first time it's, it's happened in a while. Um, I agree with uh, Trustee Marshazga. Um, <laughs> I, I like the idea, you know, just comparing. I, I'm very familiar with the charging concept, have a lot of uh, friends and colleagues who have uh, electric cars, <clears throat> and what Trustee Marshazga just described. Um, you know, they will find a destination for a charging station. They will travel to get charged up as quickly as possible. And, uh, you know, I'm concerned if we do it near the train station or in a commuter lot, the <clears> logistics <throat> and enforcement um, really is not consistent with some of the benefits we could get if we put it in the business district. You know, what happens if somebody parks in the charging lot for the whole day and somebody wants to get a 20 minute charge and can't get there? It just seems like there's a lot of collateral issues that have to be put through. You know, whether it's in the green lot or someplace along Burlington, I like the idea because it forces somebody to do nothing for 20 minutes other than walk into one of our businesses or grab a bite to eat or just generally see what's going on in our central business district. I agree. Thank you. If I could uh, just comment on uh, Trustee Marsh Osga's comments about the charging stations. These quotes are for level two stations. They're not for level threes. Um, the quotes are for uh, two pedestals, which would have two cables on each. So uh, the capacity to charge four cars for the quoted, uh, for the quotes in front of you. If we want to scale that back to a single pedestal with two cables, we can do that. But if you look at the reference quotes, the majority of the costs are for the installation of infrastructure. The pedestals are relatively cheap, if you know the 15 grand relative to the 90 grand, uh, 90 thousand dollar quote. When you jump into the level three, although they do charge a car in a relatively quick manner, they are vastly more expensive than the ones quoted here. So, per, pro, per my engineer, we are looking, you know, closer to the. 
ninety to one hundred thousand dollar range when you get into the level three chargers, which do not include the infrastructure. So um, the expectation would be that the costs would escalate if we were to step up into that level three tier. Also, you need a larger power supply to to feed something of that level. So the two hundred amp. Uh, service quoted in here would then have to jump up to a 400. And w this may be too overly simple. Since 200 versus 400, does it take 40 minutes to charge versus 20 minutes? Or does what's the charging of a level two? The, it takes hours for a level two. Hours? Hours. Versus, for a full charge, of course. You can, you know, you can probably put 20 or 30 miles on in an hour. It depends on the output of the charger. These are 40 amps. Okay. I think we, we still want you to continue to pursue any grant applications uh, available, and then um, we will work through our, you know, work through various installation scenarios and come back with us with a little bit more information, and we'll continue to try to see what businesses would be interested also. Does that sound reasonable? Yes, it does. Dan? Karen? So if we, is the desire of the board to put it in the green parking lot, this would come out of the parking lot fund, which currently has not budgeted for this expense. The current um, unrestricted net position of the parking lot fund at the end of 2021 was 183,000. Okay. I don't know if I'm ready to Anybody ready to say they want? I don't know if we're ready to say a location yet. I think there needs to be a little more thought out. Agreed? Yes. Sir. I would just add that it sounds like to me that if there's a demand in the commuter lots, the level mm -hmm. twos would be fine because right. people are there for a while. But to me, instinct tells me a level two would kind of be worthless as a public parking space. Mm -hmm. yeah, well, the, yeah, then the problem I see is if you rent out the space, then that person is the only person that can ever, you know, it's a commuter unless you, you know what I'm saying? He's always gonna, go ahead. There's, there's an answer to that. <laughs> the, st when staff discussed it, we discussed making it one of the hourly commuter spots in parking lot one. So I would move the permitted spot that's currently there around the corner a little bit by the swim club. And that would be an hourly parking spot. So it could be you, we could, make the fee for charging the, the car um, inclusive of the utility use as well as our um, codified parking fee structure for as an hourly rate. Okay. Yes. I would just add one more thing. I think we need to think of this as phase one, that we're going to do a whole lot more of this down the road. This is just the start, and I think that may inform our decision making in terms of where we put them. And, that kind of thing. Thank you. Oh, yes. If I may, so to be clear, we have that $10,000 grant right now on the table. If we're going to make use of it, then the work has to be done by the end of March of 2023. So just so that the board is aware of the time frame, And that's fine if we choose not to get it done before them, but just recognize that then that, that grant will be lost. Okay. I, also, I also want to note that the IEPA grant for the 80-20 split. Um, we do not have a timeline on the application, nor have we received any information if we could apply as a retroactive reimbursement from that grant if we were to install it sooner. Okay, thank you. And I'd like to make mention that this grant was uh, brought to us by our village clerk, Ethan Soul. Thank you, Ethan. You're welcome. All right, um, do we have enough information for now? Dan, are you comfortable? Yes. The direction you have? My, what I'm gathering is we are going to wait for a grant to become available. But we are committed as a board that we will install an EV station within the next eight months, give or take, nine months. Regardless of grant funding. I would believe that's true. Yeah, right? we do. We have 10,000. We do. I mean, we we large have more grant yeah. funding. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, we move on to trustee reports and communications. Do any trustees have any reports this evening? I do. Mr. Gallagos. So uh, the uh, rentals for kayaks are back on the river. 
Uh, you can look at the Parks Recreation Facebook page to have the uh, access to a link to rent your kayaks on that uh, August 14th, I believe is the date on that one. And the Junior Women's Club will be holding a first of its kind here on our river, uh, Swan Races. And that link is on their Facebook page, um, which is looking very lively with a lot of activities, food trucks, and it's going to be a fantastic event. So that's all I have for those two river events today. Thank you, Tracy Thank you. Gallagos. Anything else? Hearing none, uh, the board does have need for an executive session this evening. We'll be discussing probable, imminent, or pending litigations. The board will not reconvene and no final action will be taken. So I'd like to ask a motion and a second to adjourn to executive session. Motion made. Motion by Trustee Gallagher. Second? Second. Second by Trustee Marshalska. Ethan, if you'd please call the roll. Trustee Evans. Aye. Trustee Gallagher. Aye. Trustee Marshalska. Aye. Trustee Hannon. Aye. Trustee Pollock. Aye. Motion carries. Thank you all.